Hello everyone, and welcome to the first Hermitcraft episode of the year of 2019. I want to start off by saying thanks to everyone for sharing all of your New Year's resolutions with me in the last episode. It was really fun to read through them all, and I wish you all the best in achieving your New Year's resolutions. As for me, I had another little project planned for 2019, and that was to record what is known as an episode and transform this Guardian Temple area into something magnificent and glorious, but I have decided it's probably not the best use of my time. I'm actually going to work on this area in regular episodes, like today's regular episode. Now, i got a question for you. Do you know what an episode is? There'll be a poll on the screen. You can vote yes or no. If you vote yes, then you know all about it. And if you vote no, you can check out the previous episodes that I've recorded in the description box down below. They will be listed down there. And basically what I did in Season 4 was I made three episodes where I transformed a Guardian Temple into a crazy big build. And I basically squeezed like 10 episodes worth of time into a single episode for each of those. It was really crazy. And I don't want crazy in my life right now. So here's what we're going to start off by doing. Actually working on this thing and making some progress. But first of all, I need to fill up six shulker boxes full of sandstone. Because we're going to need crazy resources to build this thing. So here it is, one, two, three, four, five, six, all full of sandstone. And I was curious, would my picks be able to do this without needing repair? The answer is yes, as you can see, I've really ground them down to their last of bits. Anyway, while I've been digging this out, I thought it would be really cool if we did like a before and after comparison of this area. Well, that wasn't so exciting. You know, I mined over 11,000 blocks here for this build, and even though it's a large number, it doesn't look so much when you're looking at it from above, right? Anyway, we're going to be placing these blocks in this area. We're actually going to be crafting the sandstone into smooth sandstone, which we have to make from slabs. Yes, that's right. This stuff right here is what we're going to build our walls out of. I have had another server up designing this thing intermittently for a long time, trying out lots and lots of materials. We are going to replace the sand wall that you see here from this side. Oh, it's a guy with a trident. And now I seem to have lost the fella with the trident. But I killed his friend and I got some gold. Anyway, this smooth sandstone is going to be taking up the wall on the outside of the Guardian farm and the wall on the inside of the farm as well. And there you have it. When we look in all directions, you can see the sandstone wall is in place. And I really wish I'd made up my mind earlier because I've now got about three shulker boxes full of packed ice, but that's fine. Behind the Guardian farms, it's still sand, so these things are going to be torn out and rebuilt, but they will be rebuilt at this height here. However, we're going to work with the system we once had in this corner where we're going to have uh, rails going all the way around. And I was wondering about lowering this all down to that level so we can have even more spawning spaces. But the more spawning spaces we have vertically, the longer they take to come down to the bottom. And if you consider the size of this thing, we really don't need to worry about how much efficiency we're getting from this thing because it's already very powerful. In fact, the entire time that I've been in the area, I've also been routinely coming over here and scrounging out some of the shards and the bits for the sea lanterns and creating some. And look at that, absolutely crazy amounts of sea lanterns. That will mostly go into the nether hub project though. So, as you can see, the next wall is in place on the inside here, and you may be thinking it's not quite as tall as the other one there. We're going to remove that block and that slab. We're actually going to have waterlogged slabs as the roof coming over here, and that'll help with the overall look of the build whenever we get to that stage. We've got to prepare the farm around here, though, so if we drop down below and check out what we've done, we built the inner wall, we put glass at the bottom, that was pinched from the Guardian farm I built in the corner where I built it with glass, which was a mistake. And now we need to do the next couple of steps to get this farm up and running. So I put down some grass going around the outside. So those need to be turned to path blocks because that's where we go and collect all of the items. But this time, we're not going to be collecting them with hoppers. We're actually going to be collecting them with rails underneath and minecarts going around. That's going to be an interesting project to set up. So I've got some more tidying up here to do. We also got to go into the inside, set up the signs and the lava again. And I'm sure it's going to take me quite a bit of time. 
So there you go, all the lava in place, all the signs put in as well. There are signs above it that we can't quite see. That'll stop the water dropping on top of this stuff. And now we're actually going to head up top and place all of the water and start to build the roof on top of it as well. As I said, it's going to be waterlogged. It's going to be different from what we did before. So we've got to figure out an order in which we're going to do things here. And we've also got to not fall into that lava. So I'm going to put stairs here because these are going to be waterlogged. But they will stop the water from falling down into the inside section. Then we need to put water both on this side over here and on the opposite side as well. And it flows all the way downwards and the guardians will be able to spawn in there and fall into our lava trap. Now what I then got to do is once those are below is do this above and I've already messed that up so we'll break that and I should probably do this free wide to begin with yeah I don't want things to get messy here so as we break these blocks the water is going to start to flow inwards and I can put a water source block here where these are and then that'll create more right spreading across and I'll leave it at that because once we place one on the inside It'll spread across, but it will also then flow down into here, and that could potentially confuse me. So, actually, we'll do this bit last. We've had some accidental flooding, so let's do some purposeful flooding on camera. There it all goes, heading down to the corner. And then we break these two blocks, and it should flow all the way down there. Excellent. And you know what? This just isn't actually as exciting as I thought it might be. Yes, anyway, the water does what it does, it spreads down. And now you can see our entire farm is a box that's sort of waterlogged on the top. But then we have the stairs to stop it from flowing inside this area. And if my frames are a little bit herky-jerky at the moment, you're about to see the reason why we have loads of items down here just sitting on top of the grass. And that's because I actually put this at the wrong height. So luckily what I could do is tear out what we had here before, move it up by one block. And I'm glad I did that first because we could see the farm in action, make sure that it's working. Because the next thing we need to do is to put some rails underneath so we can send around the hopper minecarts and pick up all of these items. And it is going to be laggy for me while I'm doing that. Look at this. They are spawning just about everywhere and it is 10 times worse when I'm the only person on the server. Uh, as of right now, though, there's less items. Did you know that you can't turn a grass block into a path block from underneath? I'm clicking like crazy. You have to hit it from the side or from the top. So you know what this means? In order to turn these back into path blocks, I've got to run around on the inside. The only comfort is when I'm standing here, the guardians are less likely to spawn. Well, they're not going to spawn above me. They'll be spawning behind and on the sides at the moment, but... I'm pretty sure I'm going to run into some problems here. There are signs on this block, so I can't break here. I'm going to need an ender pearl to get in there and an ender pearl to get out. And now I get to run around like a headless chicken and hope that nothing kills me. <laughs> well, that was relatively peaceful. I got zapped once and it sent me up into the lava, which was slightly alarming. But then again, we got fire protection and lava doesn't really do that much damage. So I've hit a little bit of a hitch in my plans where I realised that the next step isn't actually as straightforward as I thought it would be. There needs to be planning and preparation. But there is still more that I can do here. We've got one set of rails going underneath. We need another one because there are two wide path blocks here. And they're going to go around to these centre points that are currently open. Well, you can't see that one, but there's another one behind those chests. The tracks are going to meet up, there's going to be four of them in total, and they're going to go down to the centre from each side. And then the whole area is going to be opened up, and I'm hoping it's going to have a really dramatic look with a storage system above it. This is where I realise that I've got plans in my head that I actually need to figure out before I start doing it in the world. You see over here, I've built what we'll probably have at the end of these rails, however I kind of envisioned them being closer to the centre. Now the problem with that is the further to the centre we go down we have less space to build and I need to know exactly what I need in terms of dimensions. So we will have simple unloading systems like this. In fact we can get both of these underway already. They will only pick up a small portion of everything but they will start picking up items 
And what they're going to do when they go over to that end is actually go down into another unloader. So each trip that it takes, it doesn't double back on itself. It always goes into an unloader, which I think is probably an effective way to do it. So now we'll see that the items are going down into the chest. But then the question is, what do I want to do with it once they're in this chest? Do I want to filter them all into their own chests or just let them be a jumble? These are questions I don't have the answers to, so it doesn't make sense to do too much more here at the moment. I'm going to do more work on these rails. I think we can get something acceptable that we can call temporary to collect all of the items. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to show you something I recorded earlier with Doc. Now, you're probably aware the prank war has escalated. There are now two sides and bases are being built. And Doc was working on a missile thing. I don't know what exactly you want to call it. It's like an entity launcher and he needed some help. So I was happy to lend him a hand. Hey. Hello, my friends. Hello. <laughs> I heard you needed some help. Yes. Crucial mission. It's time for the first official Hermitcraft Intercontinental <laughs> Ballistic Creeper Rocket test launch. Wow. Creeper Rocket. Well, you know, this time we're going to shoot cows. Oh, so I see. The mo Starting the motto is, small. <laughs> yeah, Fege la vache. Get the cow. So, yeah, um, we need to launch the rocket. Whoa. Oh, my God. Oh, there's lava behind you. Yeah, yo, I was just like... Okay, he's down, he's down, don't I just worry. walk into the lava or what? He was a G-team spy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. compromised and tried to take you out. <laughs> Did you see their, their water filter over there? Their yeah. Brita water filter thing? It's a bit weird, I mean, one, it? Yeah, one thing's for sure, they got clean water over there now. Yeah. Cannot be unseen. Well, anyways, um, um, we got a TNT cannon ready. Um, I went ahead and charged all 108 TNT charges in there. You did Zuma that all yourself, me. did you? No, no, Sizuma helped me. <laughs> <laughs> because at the moment, the, load, the loading of the thing is a pain in the butt there. I need to add some stuff to it. And now we're going to officially test launch the first cow out of it. Yes. Yes. This we is our base, by the way. My, my peeps haven't yeah. really seen this. Oh, no. And Force is working force. on a moat to protect us. Oh, hey, we have a, we have a team name as well. We have a team name as well. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm ignorant at the moment. I think I know what it is. It, in short, it's STAR, but I completely forgot what it stands for because it was That's very amazing. complicated, but <laughs> <laughs> kind of works with our... Man, there is no way up. Look at that. You've got an Fawzi. ender pearl over there. Yeah, but Fawzi is, is working on the mode, trapping it up and making it terrible. That's the inside of the Star Fortress. Here's the cows, and I have a connection tunnel, but we can't take the cows there yet. But yeah, we must name one. And uh, bring her over. So wait, we should have some some resources down there. If you don't know yet, this is our lousy chamber. Um, yeah, we need here. we need a proper storage room. We need some proper yeah, we need a vault. going on. Yeah, I mean everything that is in here is up for grabs. They could rob us blind, man. So we need a vault. We need a meeting room. There's so many projects we need to work on, and we have limited amount of time. Okay, so let me quickly make a name tag here. Aha, Anvil. La Lavash. <laughs> um, we're naming it because um, I need to be able to um, locate the cow. It's a crucial test. Yeah. And everything, you know, there's strict procedures to um, launching intercontinental, intercontinental rockets, of course. <laughs> so, yeah. You don't want it looking First like all, a regular old cow when it lands, basically. No. And, yeah, we need to find it. We need to be able to find it and see if the rocket was accurate. All right. Here, um, can you name her? There you yep. go. La Vache. The cow. We're learning some French today in this episode as well, peeps. Ain't that great? Hey. I thought this was German. Jeez. Okay. No, it's French. It's a reference to Monty Python, of course. Uh, in my last episode, I asked if people recognized the reference I made. And of course, like there was hundreds of comments yeah. from people saying, it's of classic. course, it's Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Classic British British humor. I love Monty he's, Python. He's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. That's my favorite there's line. So, there, there's so many glorious quotes in there. I mean, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the cannon silo is over there. Um, for Suzuma's viewers that are watching right now and don't know um, what it is, it is a pretty new cannon design or brand new cannon design I showed in my last episode. And we're going to use it to launch all kinds of nasty stuff over onto <laughs> G Team's base. I like um, this. I like where yeah, this is going. The setup. Yep. And uh, oh yeah, the Zuma, by the way, all already had a. Oh, I think your lead might have broke. Yep. Oh, I've got it. Okay, pick her up. Nice. So, you know, 
Um, as we have no Geneva Convention here on the server, um, obviously there's no limits to our cruelties. So yeah, we're definitely considering making um, making witches reign over there too. Mm, yes, I got a witch farm we could put to use. Yep. Many so, things okay. we could use this for. So be careful she doesn't fall down the hole. That would be a huge fail now. So uh, maybe you can bring her over here. We need to get her into the into She's the water. She's stubborn. Tunnels. I'll tell you that. Yeah, she knows what's up. I mean, she's going to space now. <laughs> First cow in Minecraft space. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, Let's a see. little bit of nudging will uh, probably do this. Yes. Oh. I'll help you from this side. Yes. Okay, we got her. Nice. Beautiful. All right. Yeah, well, this this, this lead here, that that is for science. Oh, man, okay, this is crazy. Okay, cool. Uh, the cannon is primed. We got 180, uh, 108 TNT. Each of these dispensers is loaded, so it is dangerous now. Um, yeah, for any casuals walking in and randomly flipping trapdoors, right, Sizuma? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that was something that I did. I saw a trapdoor. I flipped it open. There was an observer face behind it. I, I thought I might have destroyed something. Luckily, oh, it yeah. weren't loaded. Yeah, it wasn't loaded, but it could have been an expensive misfire. All right. Everything is double-checked. Funnily checked. enough, <laughs> yeah, quadruple-checked. Iskal is on over there, so the area is loaded anyways. I think he was over there, but yeah, we need to make sure X runs out towards the base still yes. after after the splashing was done. The cow is in there. We're going to do the, the splashing pot. first, though, right? You're ready to yeah. set the trap off? The pots are loaded. Down there is the pressure plate. I need to hit it with an item. Okay. Um, this should should be okay. All right. Oh man. I Here we go. Really I'm gonna do the potions, Doc. Yeah. Okay. Once, twice. It looks hit like it, it's got. Hit, hit her again. Hit her okay. again. Hit her again. Just to be sure. Okay. Dropping the item. <laughs> this is epic. Okay. Now oh. now I want to watch this thing launch out. Okay. It's triggering. Here we go. Fly cow, fly. Dude, it. I did not even see it go upwards. I have no idea if she survived it. <laughs> Whoa. There's no there's no meat lying on the ground? No. And she's gonna fly in a straight line, right? If if it worked, she should be up there now. If it worked, I hope I hope everything worked. How I mean, high maybe... in the air does she go, Doc? I I was not able to confirm that even in a test world it must be over a thousand blocks. <laughs> she could be up there now. We and don't know. And she's got man. slow falling. Yeah. I mean, so eventually it might run out to... before she can hit the ground. No, no. And she doesn't go that high. Uh, but okay. it will take. Definitely can take a few minutes to come down. It'll... But I didn't see her going off as well. I have no idea. Yeah, that I was didn't... very fast. She she could have died. Um, but normally, if she really flies off, you see it. Well, we'll here's it. the thing. If you tested it in a creative world, that would have been on your own computer. If you do it yeah. on a server, the server has no, no. to send I you... Tested. I tested it on a server, so... Oh, yeah. okay. Well, you know, the connection to the server makes a difference, right? Like, yeah. if it's laggy, it's going to tell you, oh, it's actually up in the air already, and then you're not going to see it move, so... Yeah. We'll see. I mean, now we pretty much we have to hang out here and scour the area and... Check if we maybe see a cow falling from the sky slowly, and hopefully Iskal is not coming after us. I don't think he's he's in their base. He was right shooting now, arrows no. at us earlier, weren't he? Well, we've been sky gazing for quite some time. Yep, nothing's and fallen out of the sky. Not today. Nothing's falling out of the sky at the moment. So clearly, um, it, there needs to be some adjustments. So I can only assume that the cow had scooted into the TNT somewhat too close. Mm. Or that the cow already had taken damage, or what also sometimes happens with these stupid potions that the full effect isn't uh, properly applied. But um, it should have been. We fired it twice. Um, if the if the effect was not properly applied, it had the particle effects. Yeah. And unless it ran out just before it exploded, it should have at least gone up into the air. So we would have seen some drops on the ground at some point, right? Which we didn't. Yep. So I, I think this thing probably killed it. Makes the most yep. sense. It did it didn't look like it took off while I was looking at it, honestly. It when you when it when you see the cow flying off, it really takes off. You sh you see it shooting off. So we might have to reload and try again. Okay, here we go again. We loaded more TNT into the cannon. We have five shots now in case something goes wrong. Yep. Um okay. Splash. 
Um, item drop. Moment of truth. Will we see this cow go into the sky? Okay, we triggered. Have we got TNT in there? <gasps> oh, I saw. I saw what happened. What happened? I saw the cow go up, but it looked like it was dying as well. Yeah. I totally I saw a frame of a cow sideways, midair, forward a little bit. I mean, maybe it was taking damage, but it really looked like it died. That'd it's hard to guess. tell. I could, I could always stop recording and look at the frame again. Yes. Let's do Let's that. Let's do this. And we're going to trigger the trapdoor manually this time. No item dropping or anything. And in addition, we're going to splash the car with the potions from right on top. Uh, yeah. Maybe, you know, there's a hitbox issue because the car is one and a half, sits a bit lower. Maybe um, the dispensers are not in a perfect spot for the cow. We can see we that see. by pressing F3 and B right now. In fact, if you look at yeah. it here, the cow is literally lower than yeah. most of the dispenser. I thought it would be lower than half. Actually, no, it's just under halfway. Yeah. So you're so going to splash it from above, right? Here. Oh, okay. Here. All right. So. And the other one? Um, oh yeah, slow falling. That is should be still in the dispenser. Yeah, grab one if you okay. can. Uh, don't don't want to fall down. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Got it. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, and we need to observe carefully if she gets launched. We're gonna exactly hit her from on top quickly, and then you need to quickly pre uh, trigger the cannon with the camera account. Okay. Right. So I'm gonna have and to I'm, go. I'm one, gonna stay. Two. Oh, it yeah. got me. Then I'm gonna jump. Trigger the camera account. And I can't move away and see what's going on. Did you see anything? <laughs> no idea, man. <laughs> no idea what happened. Um, oh. um, well. I mean, I saw a frame no of it last time. Now we don't know. Yeah, last time we definitely could confirm it died from the frame. Um, now I want to quickly check something. If it's double triggering, then it means that two lots of TNT are getting set off at different times. So that yes. that will probably kill the cow because there's two sets of yeah. explosions. Right. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Doc. I, I'm not going to be able to help you anymore today, but I'm going to hang yep. out in the area and hopefully I'll see a cow just drift down out of the sky. Oh. Yeah, hopefully. I've got slow falling, of course. Oh, that makes it easier to take off the ground. <laughs> right, and now I yeah. can drift slowly on top of a tree and wait, I guess. Five minutes has passed and there is no sign of any cow around here. Not even a renamed one. I haven't looked over the back here. I don't think we're going to see one in this area either. Unfortunately, it looks like that double TNT blasting is killing the cow, which is so unfortunate. I hope Doc can get this fixed because it's going to be an amazing weapon in the prank war. And back here at the base, I am reducing a little bit of the frame lag by picking up more items. Here's what we're going to do temporarily. We're going to have them actually all just go to the one port over here for now. That might be a good test of seeing if it's really necessary to have four different ports, but that was more of an aesthetic choice anyway. But it would mean that these things would go out there and pick up items a lot quicker. So now the two of them can extend all the way around to that spot over there, which means there's a block where there's a blind spot, but that's not a problem and now what we're going to do is start constructing the next one if you're wondering while I'm why I'm using slabs here is to remind myself that these ones are just temporary and now we have this problem where they're connecting in the wrong direction so if I try and make a line at the front here it's going to always connect that way let's go ahead and put one there uh, it doesn't do it when it's in the middle I think I just need to think this through maybe I can do it now maybe the approach I've taken so far has just been the wrong one Yes, it was. Okay, well, that needs to be a redstone block, but what I needed to do was, first of all, put the rail at the back there, so that's entirely temporary, and now we don't touch these ones here. We should be able to just extend this out and go all the way around to our collection area. Well, that was certainly a good idea. Now all the items are getting picked up. My frames have returned to somewhat normal. There are still a ridiculous amount of guardians in this area. There's also some weird visual glitches going on up in the top area. But this is a great foundation for all the work that we're going to do here now. Because as I build up this area, 
the farm is ready and functional collecting drops which is just wonderful and that brings us to the end of this episode so if you have enjoyed it then leave a like as always thank you for doing that i appreciate your support and with this being the first episode of 2019 it means of course the year 2018 is over and what i always do on my music blog is i write up a list of my favorite artists that i discovered favorite records for the year and this time as well i also made a playlist that you can watch on youtube of all my favorite songs that were released this year if you are interested in any of those three things you'll find the links to them in the description box down below so i hope you enjoy that as well and thank you for watching this video i'll see you soon Bye bye